Pleasant morning to all and welcome to our service today. We are guided by Proper 25 on this Sunday, 23rd of October, 2022. Our chorus is, he's got the whole world in his hands. You wouldn't see any words there because you're supposed to know that. So we're saying he's got the whole world in his hands, then we, ha we have, he has got you and me, brother, he has got me and you, sister, and he has got everyone of us. procession of the Yeah. 
Timothy News on page 100. I was glad when house of the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Stay together, blessed Lord and Father. We have assembled in your name and in fellowship with one another. Enable us by your grace to offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to proclaim and respond to your holy word. Just to pray for your world and your church and that we, confessing our sins, may worthily offer to you our souls and bodies as a living sacrifice and eat and drink of your spiritual food in this holy sacrament. Amen. Colleague for purity, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, Christ our Lord. Our intro theme is 490. Four nine zero.
Was printed in our bulletins. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you on the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Sit for our readings. Just notify you that the psalm is 81, verses 1 to 6. Psalm to follow the first reading, 81, verses 1 to 6. Reading from Jeremiah 14, 7 to 10, chapter 7. Verses 7 to 10 and 19 to 22. Although our iniquities testify against us, act, O Lord, for your name's sake. Our apostasies indeed are many, and we have sinned against you. O hope of Israel, its saviour in time of trouble. Why should you be like a stranger in the land? There is a traveller turning aside for the night. Like a traveller turning aside for the night. Why should you be like someone confused, like a mighty warrior who cannot give help? Yet you, O Lord, are in the midst of us, and we are called by your name. Do not forsake us. Thus says the Lord concerning this people. Truly, they have loved to wander. They have not restrained their feet. Therefore, the Lord does not accept them. Now he will remember their iniquity and punish their sin. Have you completely rejected Judah? Does your heart loathe Zion? Why have you struck us down so that there is no healing for us? We look to you, but find no good. For a time of healing, but there is terror instead. We acknowledge our wickedness, O Lord, the iniquity of our ancestors, for we have sinned. Do not spurn us for your name's sake. Do not dishonor your glorious throne. Remember and do not break your covenant with us. Can any idols of the nations bring rain? Or can the heavens give showers? It is not you, O Lord, our God. We set our hope on you, for it is you who holds this. Psalm is 81, 1 to 6.
Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Eighty-four verses one to six. Psalm eighty-four verse one to six. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice the living God. The sparrow has found a house, and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are they who dwell in the house of your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you. Whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of spring. For the early rains have covered it pools of water. They will climb from height to height. And the God of gods will reveal himself to And 16 to 18. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. At my first defense, no one came to, to my support, but all deserted me. May it not be counted against them, but the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our sequence hymn is 431.
the Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke, chapter 18, reading verses 9 through 14. Christ, our Savior. Jesus told this, tar this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus. God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven but was beating his breast and saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. Praise to Christ our Lord. God of mercy and God of grace, we thank you for every opportunity you give us to come into your house of prayer. We hallow your name this morning, Lord. Father, we come not trusting in our own righteousness, but only in your saving grace. Keep us humbly surrendered on our knees and submitted to your authority so that we may find grace when we are in need, and mercy when we have failed. This we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. 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 
some words from St. Luke's Gospel this morning. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I speak to you in the name of the one true and living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So this morning, if we think we are righteous, we need to remember Romans 3 and 10, where St. Paul, writing to them, said, no one is righteous. And if we think we are unworthy this morning, we are sinners, we need to be reminded that Christ came not to call the righteous, but to sinners to repentance. This morning, Jesus takes us into the minds of two men in this week's Gospel reading. Following closely on the theme of prayer, in last week's parable of the unjust judge and the persistent widow, Jesus taught us a lesson in prayer. Like the widow, we ought to be persistent in our prayer. And we saw the end result. She received her just due. This parable follows closely on the heels of last week. However, in this one, Jesus now teaches us how not to pray. A Pharisee and a tax collector, some translations refer to the tax collector as a publican, one and the same persons, despised by the Jews. They went up to the temple to pray. The Pharisee prayed about himself, how good he was, not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like the tax collector. I fast twice a week and I tithe, but the tax collector, standing afar off, would not even look to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Tax collectors were hated. They were Jews who worked for the Romans. They were dishonest and they abused the taxing system by imposing heavy taxes on all, creating for themselves an abundance of wealth. Scripture would have been reminded, would have reminded us of two such persons. Zacchaeus himself, who was diminutive in stature and who climbed a tree so that he could have a clearer vision of Christ Jesus. And then there was Matthew, also known as Levi, who at the call of Jesus left the tax collector's booth and followed Jesus. You see, my brothers and sisters in Christ, whenever we have, you know, whenever we have and we meet with with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, some transformation takes place in our lives. The Pharisees, on the other hand, were a religious sect who separated themselves from others by virtue of their own righteousness. They kept strict adherence to the 613 laws handed down by Moses, including even the dietary laws. Everyone else 
failed in keeping these laws. Let's be real. Today we cannot keep the one that Jesus handed down to us, to love one another as he loves us. So we know that it was virtually impossible for the persons in those times to keep 613 laws. Anyhow, the Pharisees stuck to those laws. And so they regarded everyone who failed to keep those laws. They regarded everyone as sinners. Jesus referred to them as hypocrites who loved to pray standing in the synagogue and on the street corners to be seen by men, disfiguring their faces to show that they are fasting and drawing attention to their acts of righteousness. My brothers and sisters in Christ, one of the most common features of the Lord's parables is that it shocks us into reality. His parables always surprise us because who we think are the good guys usually turn out to be the bad guys. And the most unexpected people are the most likely who would get his attention. The reality in this parable, however, is God gives grace to the humble and he resists the proud. Let's be honest with ourselves a bit now. Within each and every one of us, there is a Pharisee. And some days, very few. There is a bit of the tax collector in each of us. Same shirt, S-H-I-R-T, but just different days. When we look with contempt on others because their sin is different to ours, when we look in disdain on the LGBTQ community, the, addict, the addicted, the alcoholic, the marginalized, and the migrant workers, the Pharisees in us come to the fore. And when we feel a deep sense of conviction and we do some introspection and are truly sorry, godly sorrow can lead to repentance and reconciliation. The tax collector received just that. God has shown us what is good, and all he requires from us is that we act justly, we love mercy, and we walk humbly with him. That's according to Micah 6 and 8. One can well imagine the smile on the face of the Pharisees who were always lurking around every corner to trap Jesus in his teachings. When he reads out their credentials, fasting, praying, and tithing, how often do we measure our goodness by what we do and not what the love of God compels. How often do we allow our piety to numb our senses and distort our vision for the things of God? The Pharisee in this parable considered himself righteous by what he practiced rather than God's mercies towards him. Now all his righteous deeds were like filthy rags before God. While the tax collector, acknowledging his need for repentance, standing afar off, beating his breast in humility and godly sorrow, 
begging for mercy he does not deserve. He said one of the shortest and most meaningful prayer that you and I ought to pray. God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Are you intimidated by those who can offer up lengthy prayers? Don't ever be. God is not moved by the length of our prayers. He's moved by the contents of our heart. And what is not seen by man is seen by God. For out of the overflow of our hearts, our mouth Prayer, my brothers and sisters in Christ, is simply talking to God and listening for his voice. We are invited to come to him with our every concern, sharing it with him with confident expectancy. Since God knows all things, we must be honest with him. It is by his grace we come into his presence to be heard by him. We have no merits of our own. Because of his great love, we are not consumed. We are to pray about everything. Nothing is too small or too large, too important or unimportant too intimate or too grand to keep us from talking to God. He hears the faintest whisper. The lives we lead have an impact on our prayers also. It is not only about praying regularly or persistently. It is also about living in faith, love, hope, humility, and obedience. It is, a, it is about applying those biblical principles we learn here week after week to our daily lives. It is about meditating on holy scriptures. When we approach God, we approach him with confidence, knowing that we cannot do whatever it is on our own, but with the strength of the strength a loving God supplies. And this is the confidence we have that whatever we ask for, as long as it accords His will, not our will, not what our longing eyes want, not what our flesh craves, but what is desirous for kingdom living. Know that he hears us and will answer. So when it comes to praying, just who are we in this parable? The Pharisees' prayer was self-centered. The tax collector's prayer was God-centered. One went to praise himself, and the other went to throw himself at the mercy of God. Our Book of Common Prayer on page 406 lists the principal acts of prayer. I wish to encourage us to dig deeply into the, those acts of prayer, to improve our prayer lives so that we may not fall into the trap the Pharisee fell into. Some of us may also be equally familiar with the acronym ACTS, A-C-T-S. A is where we stand in adoration before our God. C, we go before him in contrition. T, in thanksgiving. S, supplication. When we speak about supplication, we speak about petition and intercession, interceding for others. 
of a prayers should never be above me, myself, and I. Whenever we assume a posture of prayer, the plurality of the Lord's prayer speaks to us about our, we, and us, reminding us that we are our brother's keeper, loving and caring for all, even those who do not care about themselves. One can well imagine how the smile disappeared from the face of every Pharisee when Jesus concluded, I tell you that this man, the tax collector, went home justified before God. Why? Jesus did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Our readings this morning speaks to us in totality about faith, hope, and love. A faith that leads to the righteousness and the promise of a crown, as we heard in the reading of St. Paul's letter to Timothy. He reminds us that there's a crown stored up for each and every one of us who is longing for his appearance, longing for his return. And when he comes again, my brothers and sisters in Christ, he's not coming to bring salvation. He already did that. He's coming as a righteous judge. Not the kind of judge we saw last week. He is coming in his righteousness. The readings speak to us about hope, a hope that will not disappoint us as we long for his appearance. It speaks to us about a love, a love that will not let us go. For even when we are not faithful, God is. So let us live our lives in humility, dependent on God's mercy and not our own righteousness. A righteousness that can be found only in Christ Jesus as we invite him to be a part of our lives. A righteousness that causes us to say yes to godliness. Through prayers, my brothers and sisters in Christ, we can open those prison doors that keep us in captivity, the prison of unforgiveness, the prison of deception, the prison of all the works of the flesh listed by the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Galatians. So, who are we in this week's parable? Let us pray. Father, we come humbly before your throne of grace. And we pray, O oh God, that you look with favor on us, not weighing our merits because they are few, but pardoning all of our offenses because they are plentiful. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let me take for our meditation 458. We will stand on the last verse.
On page 104, we affirm our faith through the Nicene Creed. As we say together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen or unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made. One in being with the Father, through him all things were made for us and for salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For his sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day he rose again. The of the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Today we are praying for those who are sick and suffering, the poor and needy, the oppressed, those in the midst of war, strife, hunger, famine, and any other adversity. We are asking God's blessings upon them that they may be overcomers in their respective situations. Lord, hear us. This parish we pray for those who are ill, remembering in prayer, Onika Green, Janet Cordes, Jason Janet and Junior Griffith, Eugene George, Gloria Gardner, Sharon Singh, Ann Butts, Ann David, Jason Padmore, Anthony Tate, Roderick Toussaint, Frank Lefritas. We lift up in prayer, Esme Brewster, Pauline Parks, Parabati de Gale, Eugenia Charles, Marlene Phillip, Myra Prentice, Agatha Chevalier, Sonia Tichero, Lucille Richards, Lydia Lewis, and all those who got up this morning not feeling well, pray for God's healing grace to be upon them all, that they may be restored to wholeness and strength to continue the good work that God has begun in them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Remember in prayer, those who have died during last week, we buried Shondell Thomas and just a day after his grandmother died. We don't have a full name, but she has died. Pray for that family now in grief. Give them the strength to face the days ahead with steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those without hope. Rest eternal grant unto those who have died. May their souls and the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God. Rest in peace and rise in God. We seem to have some men in the church this morning, so we're going to let the men. On page 107, the men, hear me well, the men are going to do the intercessions. 107, form B, and we share it among the men this morning. Anybody could start. That we all may be one. (laughs) 
that your name may be glorified by all people. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. That our works may find favor in your sight. That they may be delivered from their distress. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others known to us at this time. As we say together, Almighty God, to whom all needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords to your will and the good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask, grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We take our act of penitence on page 123. All these things we ask in Jesus' name, said, ask and you'll receive, seek and you'll find, knock on the door shall be opened unto you. On page 123, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Using the form A, let us therefore confess our sins as we say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and one another in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The kingdom of God is justice, peace and joy inspired by the Holy Spirit. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We are singing our offertory hymn from the back of our programs. Heal our land. Our land is in need of healing. Last newscast I heard at 7 o'clock, another four or five people have died. Heal our land. That will be our hymn this morning.
The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace and love to all, all, all. Continue on page 126 with the presentation of the offerings. Through your goodness, Lord, we have this bread and wine and money to offer. The fruit of the earth and the work of human hands, they will become our spiritual food. All things come from you, O Lord, and of your own do we give you. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord of God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father Almighty, everlasting God. Page 131, and of God the Holy Spirit. For by water and the Holy Spirit you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ, O Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. page 142. Sovereign Lord and Father, to you be glory and praise forever. In your boundless wisdom you brought creation into being. In your great love you fashioned us in your image. In your tender compassion you sent your Son Jesus Christ our Savior to show human nature. In the power of the Holy Spirit he overcame the power of sin and death and brought your people to new birth as first fruits of your new creation. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to the command of your dearly beloved Son, For you, Father, a sacrifice of thanks and praise. Send your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, Jesus, our Lord and Redeemer. 
as we partake of this food of new and unending life, may your Holy Spirit establish us as a royal priesthood with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Margaret of Antioch, St. Jerome, and all your sons and daughters who share in your eternal inheritance through Jesus Christ, our Lord, with him and in him and through him by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven in songs of everlasting praise. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. This is the true bread which comes from heaven. My brothers and sisters in Christ, draw near and receive his body which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Remember that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And gracious Lord, that we may so eat the flesh of your dear son, Jesus Christ, and drink his blood that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen.
We give thanks to Almighty God, having received the body and blood of his dear Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. At the bottom of page 148, let us pray. We say together, Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be on now and forever. Amen. in your bulletins the notices important for us is that we have just one week for our concert with the police band I don't know if Mrs. Kamabach wants to say anything on that this morning because she has been keeping us posted she will do that we are asking all cemetery lot holders to remember that the observance of All Saints Day is Tuesday the 1st of November at 5.30 p.m. We are praying for good weather so that we can have the service outside. If the weather isn't good, we'll have it inside not that you'll be protected from all the rain but you'll be protected from some so that is tuesday the first of november on that day we hope that we will have a new lighting system for the churchyard so that churchyard will be flooded with light and we are also pursuing giving you, giving or putting uh, the battery lights on the tombs. So please remember that and we also urge you to give us your list of people, departed people that you want us to pray for. So you need to get that list in this week. Don't come Monday for Tuesday. We want the list before. So all who have died will be able to do that. Because we're doing, a, doing this a little different this year. And we do hope that you'll turn out to be part of it. I think that's what I would have to say. I'll give brain out to Ms. Komabach to give us a short update on where she is. Good morning once again. You're hearing me, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, you know, um, the concert is right around the corner, you know that. Yeah. You know when we started? We started in July. And October is here already. We started early so that we wouldn't be running around like headless chickens. You know, that's the worst thing at an event, as if we have just started. But although you hear Canon saying, Mrs. Kamabat, Mrs. Kamabat, some of you are disabled, are disabled. I could never do this alone. All of us here can have a nice, bright idea. 
let us do this, let us do that. Lovely ideas, but you can't just have the idea and sit down. It's a lot, a lot of background behind the scenes work from all the supporters. So the first thing I have to say is thank you so much for all these wonderful supporters. I don't even have to call, they call me. Although I've been doing a lot of letter writing and telephoning, they call me. You will know who you are. Thanks ever so much. You cannot do anything like this alone. Today, um, I, I refuse to talk about paying up for money because I'm so all of us have paid up already. So we'll skip that. I always think of church as a Christian club. A church is really a Christian club. And all clubs have pledges. We in the Anglican church, we have colleagues. We don't have to make up our own prayers. They are like gems, the wonderful colleagues. Those of you around my age will know, at Sunday school, we had to learn that by heart. And you got marks for giving up the colic. You couldn't leave home unless you knew the colic by heart, the colic for the day. I remember there were so many of us in our family, and each of us had to say it before our parents, before we left for Sunday school. And then we would get a mark, the maximum was five. Well, of course, if you came home with three, you know what happened after that, yeah. All right. Then, what I have to say is, um, we are a Christian club. Most ordinary clubs have their pledges. We have the college. And whenever I think of an event, my favorite colleague, I'm going to ask you all to say it with me just now. I say this every morning, every evening, until the event takes place. I'm sure some of you will guess what colleague is a very famous colleague. If you can turn to page 178 in your Book of Common Prayer, 178, page 178, proper 19. You seen it? It starts, oh God, because long in the old prayer book, the previous prayer book, we knew, knew, we knew this colic as, oh God, for as much as without thee. I remember going to school at high school, and whenever we students, when the principal in those days in the 1950s thought that we were given trouble, she would hold her head and say, oh my gosh, let me go for my colleague, oh God for as much. So everybody knew that colleague called, oh God for as much. And from school, I have always adopted that colleague. And I say it every day, every day. So let's say it together. Oh God, for as much as without you, we are not able to please you. Mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit May in all things direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. At this stage of the event, the only thing we can do now is to pray for good weather, that the um, band will play to its heart's content, and that you'll enjoy Sunday, October the 30th, 2022. Thanks ever so much. Yeah. Suzanne Longden is the treasurer of the Northwest region from St. Michael's and All Angels. Well, she has died, so we have a funeral there. We also, in this week, on Wednesday at All Saints, there is a service, memorial service for the bishop's wife. 
and the funeral would be in Tobago at St. Mary's, what day? Funeral is Wednesday, and when is the service? Wednesday, 2nd of November is the funeral in Tobago. And this Wednesday is the memorial at All Saints. At 10 o'clock? 10 o'clock. Right, so I got that done. So, um, birthdays and children. this thy servant Christine continual joy of thy blessing we thank you God for years already given pray for those to come pray that she'll enjoy good health and strength and continue to use the gifts you have imbued her with for the building up of your kingdom in this part of the vineyard of Christ our Lord Amen. Pour upon this thy servant O Lord the continual joy of thy blessing be with her in her going out and her coming in be a constant companion on earth's journey Continue to guide her into the ways of all truth. We thank you for years already given. Pray for those to come. Pray that she'll enjoy good health and strength. Look upon her, O oh God, and give her that strength as she continues to do your will and your work in this part of the vineyard, through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> you talk to me. You. Get that? Right. Hands together. Eyes closed. Say together with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be in your house of prayer. Bless us, guard us, and guide us in all our undertakings. Help us to be obedient to our parents, to our teachers, and our responsible elders. And keep us walking in your way and your commandments. Amen. Have a pleasant day all. So you talk to me after church? Okay? All right. <laughs> Final hymn is 515. It's marching to Zion. leave here unless we thank Mrs. DeFritas for her presentation. So you could match as I know.
Let us pray. Increase in us, O God, faith, hope, and charity, so that in order to obtain what you promise, we may love what you command. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Please have a pleasant day, pleasant week ahead.